Bill didn't live to see the end of the Cold War. That's a shame. But he knew where it was going. He had put in place the forces that would bring down the Soviet Union. Now, he was a very busy man. When he was in the office, he had more appointments than your average Washington, D.C. dentist. I mean, it was incredible. But sometimes, late afternoon, things would slow down a little bit. He liked to chat. And by the way, when you chatted with Bill, he would sit in his big leather chair. He never took off his jacket in the office. It'd be 100 degrees out. He was wearing his jacket, you know, suit jacket in the office. And he would lean back in his leather chair, and he would always be bending and twisting a paper clip. It could make you crazy watching this paper clip bend and twist, and he would do this. So we were chatting about Russia and the world, and he said something that I thought was very profound, and it deserves more attention from historians than, than it's gotten. He said, you know, Herb, probably not a lot of fun to be a member of the Politburo. He <laughs> said, what? <laughs> he said, look, that's a different political system. It's not like here. He said, in that system, you kill your way to the top. And if you lose power, there's nowhere to go. No boards of directors, no foundations. I mean, there's nothing there. He says, even you're at the top, every night you've got to sleep worried you're going to get murdered in your bed. He said, by the time you get there, you, know, you just want to relax a little bit, enjoy it. Maybe get to your dacha at a decent hour, sit there and have a drink. He said, look, those Politburo meetings, they go on for hours now. He said, we're pushing their economy all over the place. We've got anti-communist insurgencies all over the country. They just can't catch their breath. The president's driving him crazy, talking about evil empire. Missile defense going to bankrupt him. So they can't catch their breath. He said, you know, these guys are exhausted. He said, if we can keep up the pressure a little while longer, we got them. Well, we kept up the pressure a while longer, and we got them. Bill Casey was one of President Reagan's most controversial appointments. There were a lot of people in Washington who wanted the president to dump Bill and give that job to someone else. Not just people in the House of Representatives and the Senate, but people inside the administration. Boy, did he have some powerful enemies. There wasn't a chance in the world President Reagan was going to dump Bill. And that's because the president knew something about Bill that seems to have eluded all of his political enemies. Remember what I said earlier? The most important role of our intelligence service is to be the president's radar. To tell him what the future is going to be and to tell him the future soon enough and clearly enough so the president can prepare for the future. Or if he doesn't like the future, change the future before it happens. Now, for those of you, you too young to remember all of this, the leader of the Soviet Union was Leonid Brezhnev. Brezhnev took power in the Kremlin in 1964, which is before Ronald Reagan even entered politics. Okay. Brezhnev was an old school, hardline, vicious <coughs> commie. And the chances of ever working with him to ease global tensions were non-existent. Well, by the time President Reagan was in the White House, Brezhnev was old, he was sick. And all over the world, everybody was on edge in foreign ministries, defense ministries, wondering what's going to happen next. Who comes next? Where's this going? What's going to happen? Finally, in November 1962, Brezhnev died. <laughs> More accurately, on November 10th, 1982, someone in the Kremlin noticed that Leonid Brezhnev wasn't breathing. <laughs> that afternoon, the CIA went into massive overdrive. I've never seen anything like it. Reports were coming in from every section, every division in the building, impact of Brezhnev's death on Kremlin politics, on the Soviet Union, on East Europe, uh, on the NATO alliance, on relations with China, on Japan. CIA station chiefs in countries that never heard of were sending in reports. You know, impact of Brezhnev's death on the politics of Upper Volta, things like that. And at one point in the afternoon, I walked into Bill's office and said, uh, anything I can do to help you out? 
by the way, it was an amazing sight. He had a huge desk, and it was just piled with reports coming in. And even as we were talking, Betty Murphy was his wonderful assistant. Betty was coming in with more stuff. I mean, it was almost like a comedy in a movie, just stuff being loaded onto the desk. I said, anything I can do to help you? And he just looked at it. He said, nah. I said, get out of here. I said, I want to boil all this down for the president. Well, went back to my office. About an hour later, I thought, gee, before I go home, we ought to check one more time. So I walked back in just to see if there's anything he wanted me to do. And Bill was sitting there. And he was reading a document. It's one or one and a half pages. He had dictated his memo to Betty. She had typed it. And now he was just going over it. And he was looking at it very, very carefully, reading it slowly, almost sort of closing his eyes. He wanted to make sure it was just what he wanted. And then finally, just thought about it for a second, almost as like though he was praying for a minute. He was sort of looking at it. And then he picked up a pen, scribbled a signature on it, and he threw it across the desk. He said, here, this is what I'm sending to the president. Take a look if you want. In one or two paragraphs, he summed up what had happened and what everybody thought the future might bring. I have never seen more information and more insight packed more densely into fewer words, more clearly and more concisely. I mean, no one could have done that. But it was the last sentence that caught my eye and always makes me laugh whenever I think of what an extraordinary man this was. As for me, Mr. President, I bet Andropov on the nose and Gorbachev across the board. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> In one breezy sentence, he told the president the next two Soviet leaders. By the way, uh, a corpse named Chernyenko was propped up between them for a few months. He got them both. Do you realize President Reagan knew the Soviet Union's future leaders before the Kremlin knew it? Okay? And that's what Bill's enemies never understood. And that's what the president understood. Bill Casey wasn't just a little smarter, a little tougher than anybody else you could put in at the CIA. He was one of a kind. Bill Casey was a crystal ball in a pinstripe suit. That's what he was. Now, Washington's changed a lot in the years since President Reagan was in the White House, not necessarily for the better. I doubt we will ever again see a man like Bill Casey in charge of our country's intelligence service. That's too bad. The world's a dangerous place. But as I hope I've been able to show you this evening, he was one of a kind, and we were very lucky to have had him then when we needed him the most. Thank you for listening to me.